So recently my friend Ryan Mahoney asked me the question, out of all the things in the world to do, why would you pray the rosary? So I thought I would make a video in response to that question because it's a pretty good question. Uh, now I could tell you all about how you do the rosary, what a rosary is, all those sorts of things, uh, but that would take a long, long time and there's probably a thousand web pages out there that could tell you all of that. I'll basically show you a rosary. It's a set of prayer beads. They got a crucifix on one end and sets of ten beads separated by one bead and a few little extras over there. And basically what you do is you use it to think about the story of Jesus and the destiny of the church. And it's pretty amazing actually. Um, but Ryan's question is a good question because for somebody like myself it doesn't always seem natural to pray the rosary. And, in fact, the rosary was not something I liked to pray initially, or was comfortable praying initially. There are certain things about it that did not settle well with my Lutheran upbringing. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story by giving you sort of a top ten list of things I love about the rosary, and hopefully you'll learn a little bit about how I came to know and love that kind of stuff. Number one it gives you a great guide. I love the rosary because you basically are introduced to Jesus through his mother, Mary. Now this is number one for me because it's also the major sticking point I had with it for many years. Growing up in the Lutheran church, talk about Mary was not common and it was certainly not comfortable. And much of the rosary is praying prayers uh, toward and with Mary. Um, so that is prayer, the Hail Mary. Uh, you pray it 53 times over the course of the rosary. And to me that seemed like A, being repetition that Jesus condemned, and B, it seemed like it was Mariology instead of Christology. It focused on Mary instead of Jesus. That made me very uncomfortable. Uh, there's also a couple mysteries about Mary that made me uncomfortable. These were the coronation of Mary and the assumption of Mary, part of what they call the glorious mysteries. Most of the mysteries in the rosaries, these are the things you think about when you're praying. These are things that are not focused, uh, well, they're focused on biblical stories about Jesus' life, or occasionally the life of the church. Uh, having non-biblical stories about Mary made me think, oh, this is all about Mary, and it made me uncomfortable. Now, eventually, I did start uh, praying the rosary, and I realized that Mary was not the sticking point. Uh, she was actually one of the highlights. It, it was because it was so Mary-focused that I was able to see Christ so clearly. Through Mary, it got the focus of seeing Christ away from myself as a selfish, self-centered, uh, faithless person to seeing Christ through the eyes of somebody who demonstrates remarkable humility remarkable faith, remarkable trust, and remarkable love for Jesus. Mary became my guide. She introduced me to things about Jesus I had no idea were even there. Uh, by having that focus on Mary, it helped me focus on Christ. And I didn't realize that until I got into it. Now the second thing that I realized oh, as time went on about the rosary was that it's, it's really great because it's portable. Uh, like I said, I have my rosary in my pocket. I didn't plan that for the video, they just fit anywhere. And you can keep it with you at any time, and I love that about it. You can keep it in your car, in your pocket, in your bag. You can wear it, although you're not supposed to do that. You can get rings that have rosaries attached to them and bracelets that have rosaries. It's very portable, which means that any time I have to go for a walk, if I'm taking my son for a walk, I could pray a rosary. If I'm doing some uh, menial task, if I'm driving, I can pray a rosary, and it's never bulky. One of my favorite things to do is use prayer books, hymnals, breviaries, things like that, but these are not always with you. They're not as easily accessible, and uh, they're not nearly as easy to just throw in your bag or in your pocket, so I love how portable it is. Um, another thing about the rosary that I really fell in love with was how personal it became, but also communal. I could pray it by myself, and it would be deeply meaningful. I could encounter Jesus in a way that touched me individually where I was at. But I also, when I pray the rosary, I'm joining in people 
in every continent who are praying the rosary, people throughout the world. Uh, and I can go to Mass, and before or after, there might be some people praying it. I can meet with any Catholic. They know the prayer. I can meet with my wife. She knows the prayer. I can talk. I mean, there's literally millions and millions of people who can join with you in this prayer. But it's still so personal. You encounter Jesus on such a personal level. So I love that tension of the personal and the communal. That's the third thing I love about it. The fourth thing I love about it is that it tells the gospel over and over and over and over again. I am just amazed at the power of this thing to tell the gospel. <laughs> Every day there's a different set of mysteries that you pray. You go through most of them a couple times a week. And it goes through the whole life of Jesus, from the Annunciation to Mary, all the way to our destiny as Christians uh, in the mysteries of the glorification and the... Uh, and the, hold on. So, as I was saying before, one of the main things that I love about the, reason, the rosary is how it connects you to the gospel. It tells you the whole story of Jesus. It tells you the whole history of uh, how God has intervened in our lives to show us His love, to show us His mercy, to show us His grace. I know God's grace more now than I ever have and I owe that a great deal to the rosary because every week a couple times a week you go through the major events in the history of the life of Jesus and of the destiny of the church and you you, th you spend time actually thinking about them it gives you the space what I used to think was vain repetition in the prayer turned out to be a, just a beautiful space for God to speak to me because I wasn't worrying about what to say next. I just had a cascade of, of prayers that would wash over me and God would open up my eyes in new ways. So just thought about Jesus' Jesus's life. It wasn't anything new, but it struck me in a new way. And I love it because it, it helped teach me the gospel over and over and over again. Uh, so that was the fourth thing. The fifth thing that I love about the rosary is it's, it's always relevant to your life. No matter when I pray it, no matter what I'm going through, there's some relevance in what's going on in that story to what I find myself doing. The reason it's always relevant is it always points to Jesus. And it helps center my life on what's most important to me, which is living a life that reflects God's love is demonstrated in Jesus. And having a knowledge of God's grace in my life, it's just been powerful. It's, it's never fallen on a heart that was unprepared in some way to receive something there. It's always relevant to my life, to my struggles, to my issues, to whatever it is that that I'm dealing with. Uh, the sixth thing I love about it is it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. You can learn it in a matter of minutes. You can memorize it. It's not like you have to study Latin. It's not that you have to memorize long prayers or entire psalms. Those things are good to do, and they're things that I try to do. But it's nice to have something so simple that I can fall back on, something that even a child can learn, that I can teach to my son, that I can do with my wife. It doesn't require a great deal of thought. We can do it at the end of an exhausting day and uh, something you can fall asleep doing. It's uh, just so simple. The uh, seventh thing that I love about it is that it's grounded in the church's history. In, in the course of it, you're praying scripture, you're praying the Lord's Prayer, you're reciting creeds, you're going and thinking about all this stuff, and it keeps you grounded in a lot of the kind of the foundational documents of, of what it means to be a Christian in this world and in this context, and what it means to be a Christian to people in all parts of the world. And in all different contexts, in all different times, it ties you to the, the heritage of the church. It's something that 
has been done for hundreds of years, and even before it was done, the pieces that make it what it is were already in place. And so you're connected to that rich heritage. The eighth thing I love about it is that it challenges me. My own story with the rosary was not something easy. I struggled to, to learn to love it, to learn to pray it, to learn to be comfortable with it. Uh, it stretched my own boundaries, and I need things like that in my life. I need my prayer life to always be pushing me beyond where I'm at, uh, into a, a place where God is calling me to. And I feel that the rosary demonstrated something that God was doing in me, and it continues to be a place where I'm challenged. And I love that about it. So if you have ch problems with the rosary, I think that's great. I just hope that you give it the time that its heritage deserves, I suppose. Give it a chance. You might find that the challenges that you have with it are, are going to bud forth in some of its greatest blessings. Uh, the ninth thing I love about it is it was a gift. It's a gift from a couple people who I love a lot. Uh, I learned the rosary primarily through my wife, who loves the rosary. It was, if it wasn't for her praying it, insisting on praying it, uh, I don't know if I would have gotten into it. It started out as a, a prayer that she would do, and I would sometimes pray along with the parts I felt comfortable with, or just do my own thing. And gradually we started doing it together, and I found it just amazing when I actually started getting into it. And I wouldn't have probably even thought to try it if it wasn't for my wife, Joan. So thank you, Joan. Um, it's also a gift from the church, uh, which is uh, another beautiful lady in my life. Um, and I've dedicated my life to serving my wife and to serving, serving the church. So because those are two of the main vocational uh, foci in my life. Um, it's just cherished by me. Um, and finally, the last thing that I absolutely love about the rosary is that it is easy to share. I can make a video about it to you. Uh, you can learn it online in a matter of minutes. You can give it to people. Rosaries are not expensive. I got my first rosary for free at us stand at the Ann Arbor Art Fair. They were just handing them out. It was easy to share. Um, and so that's my gift to you. I hope that you take the time to learn how to pray it and to really live into it. I would say keep praying the rosary until you feel comfortable with it before you judge it. And once you're comfortable with it, if you still hate it, that's okay. It's not the best or only way to pray. But it does deserve a fair shot. A chance. Um, it's impacted too many amazing people to be overlooked. And I hope you don't overlook it. Alright? That's why, out of all the things in the world to do, the rosary is a good thing to try.